Hi, this is Andrew Park, and this is the second video about experts. And um, let me say that there's a lot of materials out there on how to use experts in advocacy. So I'm not going to say too much, but I just wanted to make a few points. Uh, when you look at experts, you should consider at least two things when, when uh, choosing an expert. One is an expert needs to be independent, or it helps at least. And experts are independent because they are accountable to a community other than the LGBTI community. So that's what gives them their independence. They are accountable to the community that develops the standards of of expertise. They are uh, accountable to their colleagues in that same field. And so even if it's an LGBTI person who you would think, okay, you're not very independent, that person can say, look, I am independent because I'm accountable to this other community that's not about LGBTI issues. It's about, uh, you know, economics or medicine or whatever I'm an expert in. Uh, the second thing is that uh, expertise is seen differently depending upon the context. So, for instance, um, in France, uh, it was common to see psychoanalysts serving as experts on the issue of same-sex couple recognition. In the United States, that I didn't see any psychoanalysts um, serve as experts. I saw economists, uh, yet in France, there were very few economists. Um, considered experts. So the, the, the field and the skill that is considered an expert skill in an area differs from place to place. So don't think you can take an expert here and just plop them down there and have them have the same effect. Uh, when working with experts, you have to be really careful not to expect the expert to engage in the kinds of communication uh, that is advocacy communication. Experts often transmit their expertise through testimony or through a written report, and they will give that testimony and written report according to the standards of communication set out in their field. So they're going to use terminology in a particular way. Uh, you are the one that will have to go in, rewrite what they say for the blog post or rewrite what they say for the press release uh, or excerpt what they say for the little info infographic. They will not do that. And you want to do that to avoid jargon, make it understandable to your own community. So there will be a little tension there because you want to check with them to make sure you're not saying anything incorrect. But it's going to be you, not them, that's going to be doing the communication of their expertise uh, in, in many instances. Um, also, consider the use of experts to reframe issues because they can force a reframing in a way that advocates can't. So for instance, if you are dealing with an issue, I don't know, recognition of same-sex couples and uh, people are bringing in experts about um, you know, the spread of HIV or uh, criminality or uh, the morality of LGBT people, you can reframe that issue by bringing in an expert on child development who will talk about gay couples raising kids. That really forces attention to that new frame. Or um, you can bring in uh, an issue that talks about uh, attractiveness of a, of a country to businesses if there's discrimination. And so bring in an international business expert or the expert on urban development uh, to talk about what happens when there's high, level of vi high levels of violence in a neighborhood. Um, so uh, consider that for an expert. And of course, um, at all times, you should keep a close relationship with experts um, even after they're done with their particular issue in your location uh, uh, because they are people that are motivated to help on LGBTI issues. It's not going to be their paycheck. They're not going to make a lot of money. So this is somebody who's going to be a resource for you in the future.